After the commencement of hostilities at Fort Sumner in April, Major General George B. McLennan returned to the Army and on the 13th of May assumed command of the Department of Ohio, headquartered in Cincinnati. McClellan planned an offensive, which is now the state of West Virginia, that's what we just said, which he hoped would lead to the campaign against the Confederate to uh, Richmond. Mm-hmm. That's what he thought. He's like, this is, if we want to get is, to Richmond. This is, our, this is our path to Richmond right This here. is our path to Richmond. Right. His immediate objectives were to occupy the territory to protect the largely pro-union populace in the counties along the Ohio River, yes. Right. And to keep open the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. Oh. A critical supply line for the yeah. Union. Can't, uh, can't, uh, can't relinquish that. You ain't getting On May 26, a few days before the uh, battle, McClellan, in response to the burning of bridges on the Baltimore and Ohio near the town of Farmington, ordered Colonel Benjamin Franklin Kelly, 1st West Virginia Infantry of the Union. Right. So they already had a West Virginia infantry uh, with his regiment and company A of the second West Virginia infantry to advance from Wheeling to the area and safeguard the important bridge over the Monong- Monongahela 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 River at Fairmount at a distance. It's about 70 miles southwest, southwest, <laughs> southeast of Wheeling. Jeez, holy southeast, crap. southwest. <laughs> Kelly's men were supported by the 16th Ohio infantry under Colonel James Irvine. After securing Fairmont, the first Virginia, first West Virginia advance again and seized the important railroad junction of they Grafton. Got they got about it about 15 miles southeast of Fairmont on May 30th. Ooh. So now finally, finally, we see the Union coming in, advancing and and um, imposing their will on, on right. shit going nice. on here. Meanwhile, though, the 14th Ohio Infantry Regiment under Colonel James Steedman was ordered to occupy Parkersburg and then right. to proceed to Grafton after that, about 90 miles to the east. By the 28th of May, McClellan had ordered a total of about 3,000 troops into Western Virginia and placed Jeez. them under the overall command of Brigade General Thomas A. Morris, commander of the Indiana Volunteers. Oh, he like Not Thomas, the Tennessee huh? Volunteers, the Indiana Volunteers. Yeah, Indiana. He's like, about that guy from Indiana? What's Three, his name? Uh, Morris. Yeah, 3,000 troops, though. That's the biggest That's um, single troop movement that we've seen so far. That's a lot. On May 4th, Confederate Colonel... George A. Porterfield had been assigned command of the state forces in northwestern Virginia and ordered to and was ordered to graft and to take charge of enlistments in the area. Ooh, As wow. the Union columns advanced, Porterfield's poorly armed 800 recruits. So we got 3,000 versus 800 right now. Uh, there, his poorly armed 800 recruits retreated to Philippi about 17 miles south of Grafton. Philippi was the county seat of Barber County, which had voted in favor of Virginia secession. Right. They got to be there. Uh, Palmetto secession flag had been flying over the courthouse since January of 1861. So even before they officially uh, seceded, this courthouse in Barber County or in Philippi they're had like, been flying the uh, secession flag. They're like, guess what? Nobody comes here except for us. This is, this is who we are. Either way, a Palmetto uh, secession flag was flying above the uh, courthouse since January of 1861. Way before the Confederacy was even a thing. Because Confederacy didn't officially form until February seventh, right. so or ninth, and these guys are well, because South Carolina already um, right. seceded in right. December. Yeah, but uh, Virginia, these guys in um, Barber County are like, we want to go with you guys. We're gonna. We will. We well, they were probably pissed when uh, Virginia was like, nah, I don't think we're gonna do anything right now. <laughs> oh, but we are. <laughs> at, at Philippi, a covered bridge spanned the Tigart Valley River and was an important segment of the vital Beverly Fairmont Turnpike. Okay. While Portfield had a command of regimental Porter strength. Field. Right. Had a command of regimental strength that was composed of independent companies that had not yet been formally organized into regiments. Oh, so not even. Can't have that. Yeah. Most were local recruits from Taylor, Pocahontas, Upshur, Hardy, Pendleton, Harrison, B. Arthur, Barber. Yeah. Uh, Marion and Valley County. So every county in Virginia. <laughs> right. And and of Augusta, Bath, Rockbridge, and Highland. Oh. The Valley counties of Augusta, Bath, right. Rockbridge, and Highland. Right. right. Of. So these are cities in there. <laughs> yeah. So uh, inexperienced little 800 guys that know nothing. Right. Have rusty old rifles. Mm-hmm. The Don't co- take care of the, the companies were the Letcher Guards, Pocahontas Rescues, Upshur Grays, Franklin Guards, Hardy Blues. Marion Guards, Harrison Rifles, Highland County Highlanders, Barber Grays, P- Potomac Guards, Bath Grays, Second Rockridge Dragoons, Churchville Cavalry, and the Barber Light Horse Cavalry. Nice. Jeez. These companies were eventually organized in the 25th Virginia Infantry, the 31st Virginia Infantry, the 11th Virginia Cavalry, and the 14th Virginia Cavalry. What's the who, difference? Who knows how to ride a horse? Okay. With the Barber Light Horse Cavalry disbanding after the battle. 
Colonel Kelly devised a two prong <laughs> attack against Confederate forces in uh, Philippi, approved by General Morris on his arrival in Grafton on the 1st of June. The principal advance would be 1,600 men Who's led by Kelly himself. This is the, yeah. yeah, 1,600 men, though, led by Kelly himself and would include six companies of his own regiment, nine of the 9th Indian, oh, this is Union, nine of the 9th Indiana Infantry Regiment under against the Confederates, right? Right. So we got nine of the ninth amendment entry oh, nine of the ninth Indiana infantry regiment under Colonel Robert H. Milroy, Milroy. and six of the 16th Ohio infantry All right. in order to deceive the enemy into thinking the objective was Harper's ferry. They departed by train to the East. Oh. They disembarked in a small village of Thornton and marched South on a back road on the same side of the river as Philippi. Intending to arrive at the rear of the town. Oh, they're coming up the rear. Oh, look at these guys. Meanwhile, the 7th Indiana under Colonel Ebenezer Dumont were sent to Webster about three and a half miles south of Grafton. No. Oh. They would they would unite with the 6th Indiana under Colonel Thomas T. Crittenden under, and the 14th Ohio under Colonel Steedman. The column with a total of 1,400 men under Colonel Dumont um, would march directly south from Webster on the turnpike. In this way, the Union force would execute a double envelopment of the outnumbered Confederates. So they're going Ooh. this way. Uh, on June 2nd, the Union column set off to converge on Philippi. Under the, uh, after an overnight march and rainy weather, both arrived at Philippi before dawn the following morning. All right. Okay. So now we're, uh, before we're coming dawn. in. Uh, what are we going mm. from the north, south, or east, west? Either or, uh, they're coming in from both sides. Morris had planned a pre dawn assault to be signaled by a pistol shot. The Green Confederate volunteers had failed to establish picket lines for perimeter security. Ooh, you got to have that perimeter. Set Choosing, up, man. Yeah, you got to have that Isn't picket that line. Like the first thing of camp, it is. Get your perimeter set. Choosing instead to escape the cold rain and stay inside their tents. Oh, pussies! A Confederate sympathizer, Mister <laughs> Mrs. Thomas Humphreys, saw the approaching Union troops and sent her young son on horseback to warn the Confederates. Ooh. She's, she's like. They're, he's like the Union are coming. coming. The, the Union, Union are coming. That little hum, the Humphrey boy. I oh, bet. Boy. As Mrs. Humphreys watched. The, she saw Union pickets capture her son and fire her pistol at them. Oh, oh she fired a pistol. Yeah. At them. She missed. But her shots began the attack prematurely. Oh, because her pistol signaled uh, Morris's pistol that was supposed to be uh, planning the right. assault. So now everybody went when they weren't ready. Oh, my. The Union attackers began firing their artillery, which awakened the Confederates from their slumber. Those who were armed fired a few shots at the advancing blue coats. Then Southerners broke and began running to the south, some still in their bedclothes. This caused Union journalists to refer to the battle as the races at Philippi. Those yeah. guys immediately took off. They were yeah, like, I don't want no part of this. Well, it's still dark. Yeah. Rainy, wet, nasty. Mm -hmm. uh, Dumont soldiers entered the town from the bridge. Uh, Colonel Landers' ride down the steep hillside through heavy underbrush was considered such a feat of horsemanship that Leslie's Weekly, which was a magazine, I guess, gave an illustrated account of it shortly afterward. Nice. So, okay, must have been a steep little hill that... uh. Knew how to ride a horse on, huh? Nice. But Kelly's column had arrived from the north on the wrong road and were unable to block the Confederate retreat. Uh oh. Uh, Kelly himself was shot while pursuing some of the retreating Confederates, but Colonel Lander chased down and captured the man who shot him. Oh, okay. The Confederates retreated to Hutton's Hut Hutton's Huttonsville, about forty five miles to the south. Damn, those motherfuckers! They ran forty five miles. This is we ain't forty five miles. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Dang. Jeez. And I bet they made it there in 45 minutes. They're, sure like they're, a mile they're, minute, like, they're <laughs> running a mile a minute. Uh, <laughs> wow. Can you imagine? Wow. And it's still like beginning worse. They really don't know what's going on. So there's like, oh, man, this is crazy. Right. Don't even have uniforms yet. Philippi was the first organized land action in the war. Oh, organized. Yeah. Well, kind of failed at the end without catching all the retreaters but right uh they had a little battle at the fairfax county courthouse a couple days earlier but that's not counted as uh there's probably some fatalities and stuff there Wait, what, what do you do the battle fairfax courthouse why was that not on the list because it wasn't part of the civil war it was, was the first land engagement of the american civil war with oh. fatal casualties what what but they don't consider it a uh they don't consider a, a union scouting party clashed with the local militia in the vill village of Fairfax, yeah, it was resulting in the first deaths in action and right. the first wound in a field grade officer. Yeah, it was just a militia and union victory in this relatively bloodless battle propelled McClellan into the national spotlight. This is uh, the Philippine, the Philippine, the Philippine. Yeah. 
the Northern Press, hungry for battle stories. Oh, you know they were, dude. They presented it as an, chops. an epic triumph, oh. encouraging politicians to demand that a big advance on Richmond. We must march to Richmond. We must march to Richmond. Which became Bull Run. Or Manassas, whatever side you're on. Right.